We'll work from proximal to distal, starting with the bones in the leg. The leg, which is the part of the lower limb between the knee joint and the ankle joint, has two bones. Here we are looking at the skeleton of the lower limb from an anterior view. The larger bone, which is commonly referred to as the shin bone, is the tibia. The tibia is the medial of the two bones of the leg. Since we know the tibia is the medial bone of the leg, then this must be the right lower limb that we're looking at. In this image of the foot and inferior portion of the leg, we are looking from a medial viewpoint. So the bone we see highlighted in green is the tibia. At the distal end of the tibia, there is a bony projection on the medial side. This is called the medial malleolus. You can actually palpate and see the medial malleolus on your own ankle. You could try that now if you would like. Are you done? Okay, let's continue on with the tutorial. Now we'll move across to the other bone of the leg, the lateral bone, which is the fibula. This is, of course, the lateral view of the right ankle. This bone is much more slender than the tibia. While the fibula is not directly involved in weight transmission, though as we will see shortly, it is involved in the ankle joint. And similar to the tibia, the fibula also has a distal bony projection or malleolus. Since we're on the lateral side though, this one is called then the lateral malleolus. You can see it here in this anterior view of the ankle. Again, you can pause this tutorial to try to palpate the structure on yourself. You'll see that it's usually much more prominent than the medial malleolus. Now we'll move on to talk about the bones of the foot that make up the ankle joint. The foot is made up of 26 bones, quite a lot as you can see. But don't worry, for now we'll just be focusing on one. And this bone is directly involved in the ankle joint and several others help to support it by providing attachment sites for ligaments that strengthen the joint. The bone directly involved in the articulation of the ankle joint is the one highlighted in this image of the skeleton. And this is the talus. In both of these images, this one a medial view of the foot, in this one a lateral view, we can see the talus highlighted in green. It spans the width of the ankle joint and sits superior to the calcaneus, which is this bone here. We'll now take a closer look at the calcaneus. In this lateral image of the foot, we can see it sitting inferior to the talus. The calcaneus is the heel bone. It does not make the part of the ankle joint itself, but we'll see soon that important ligaments supporting the ankle joint will be attaching to the calcaneus. The final bone we'll identify today is this one here, the navicular bone, which you can see highlighted in green in both images. In this medial view of the foot, we can see the navicular a bit more clearly. It lies on the medial side of the foot, proximal to the three cuneiform bones. We can see it articulating with the talus here, as it sits directly anterior to the talus. And similar to the calcaneus, this bone is not directly involved in the ankle joint, but serves as an attachment site for ligaments that support the ankle. All right, now let's finally get into the ankle joint itself. There are actually two bony articulations we need to discuss, the first being the ankle joint proper. We know the three bones involved in the articulation of the ankle joint proper are the tibia, fibula, and talus. Together, the tibia and fibula form the ankle mortis. This arch is made up by the lateral malleolus of the fibula, the inferior portion of the tibia, and the medial malleolus of the tibia. Sitting within the ankle mortis is the superior aspect of the talus. The mortis configuration of the tibia and fibula locks the talus in place, making the joint very strong and stable, which is essential for bearing weight of a human body. The mortis arrangement of the tibia and fibula means the talus can only move in one axis. And this means that the ankle joint is a hinge joint, so it allows for only two motions to occur at it, similar to a hinge of a door. The ankle can dorsiflex, where the distal end of the foot moves superiorly, or you can think of it as the dorsum of the foot, or the superior aspect of your foot, flexing towards the leg. 
When the ankle moves in the other direction, it is called plantar flexion. Here the distal portion of the foot is being planted into the floor. The plantar surface of the foot, which is the inferior aspect of your foot, you can say that, is being then flexed. But if the mortise of the distal leg is so strong and only permits plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, then how is that we can invert and evert our ankles? Well, that movement is performed at another joint in the ankle called the subtalar joint, which is the second bony articulation at the ankle. And the subtalar joint can also be called the talocalcaneal joint. Both of these names are very fitting for where the joint actually is. The two bones involved in the joint are the talus, and the other one, you can guess, yes, it's the calcaneus. So naming it the talocalcaneal joint fits well. You can see we're very creative in anatomy. In this image of the lateral view of the ankle, we can see the talus here and the calcaneus here. Now that we've identified these bones, hopefully you can see the joint is inferior to the talus. So the subtalar joint name makes sense as well to you right now. Now on this image, we are looking at the subtalar joint from an interior and superior view. From this view, we should be able to appreciate the movements that occur at this joint. At the subtalar joint is where eversion and inversion occurs, which is very different to dorsi and plantar flexion of the ankle joint proper. Inversion is when the plantar surface of the foot moves medially and eversion is the opposite. So when the plantar surface of the foot moves laterally, the subtalar joint is what we call everting. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.